Hello everybody and welcome back to the Legends of Runeterra World Championship. We are at the halfway point now, which means we still have six more matches to go. How exciting is that? We are going to be welcoming back Pastry Time and Casanova. Long time no see Pastry Time and Casanova. It is very good to have you back on the desk. I gotta ask you first, because obviously this is a big storyline of today so far. NA leading the charge right now? Two players at 2-0? Let's go! I'm not surprised at all, actually. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think NA sent really good players. I think, you know, one of my, our, our number one seed from seasonal points, he's so consistent, he's so good. Ikado is just hot streaking. Like, I, I expected them to do great things. We got Majin Bay tomorrow. NA has some... that we were able to send. And NA's been dominant in the seasonal. The USA in particular has been great in the seasonals all year. And now we have three... USA players in the tournament, two of them making for 4-0 already. This is expected result. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to start well, of course, but definitely still early and very curious to see how kind of the rest of things shake out. I think I'm honestly surprised to see SEA, I think, not win a, a match yet. Mm, yeah. uh, definitely a bit more surprising given the strength of those players. But again, long tournament, still also two groups to play tomorrow, so let's not get too excited. Uh, only halfway through day one, so very excited for the, the rest of the matchups we have coming up. You're absolutely right. And let's go ahead and recap the format now that we are at the halfway point of today. For day number one today, we are covering groups A and B who are playing in a round robin format with best of three matches. Tomorrow, we've got group C and D playing against each other. And then the top two from each group will be participating in Day number three, which is a single elimination bracket, and then we will be crowning the world champion for Legends of Runeterra. But we have another match that we're getting into, but Pastry Time, what, what do you think about that format? Honestly, uh, I think as cool as it is to see like such a long group stage and kind of get the eight best players from uh, a worldwide competition, uh, there is, you know, some wiggle room in the group stage to take losses, which is nice. But day three is absolutely cutthroat. Like single Elim, best of three. I mean, it's basically half a seasonal on top of this massive group stage as well. Uh, definitely something that a lot of these players are familiar with navigating. But uh, for all the fun and like the, the ability to take a match loss in the group stage that you might have, you do not get that luxury on day three. So that's going to be a super exciting finale. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of high stakes in the tournament right now, the next matchup, both of these players are sitting at a 0-1 record. So definitely needing to get a win on the board in order to keep the top two dream in the group alive. Let's introduce Artify and Real Key back into our matchup in Group A, match number four. We already saw both of these players perform and they're bringing some really interesting decks. So I'm super excited to see the fact that we have a different deck basically for all six of the decks that are brought here so i think that is super yeah i mean both of these players need this win desperately if they lose they have no shot of making that top two we saw real key with the heartbreaking loss earlier back and forth and back and forth and artify needing to pick up a win for sea pastry pointed it out sea has not been able to find a win this is a region i actually expected to do rather well in general they they came in hot after dominating the asia regional where they kind of combined SEA and Asia and SEA took four of the five spots. This, this region was looking so good coming into Worlds and it's been a really rough start. So we'll see if Artify can maybe start to turn things around with this match. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, heartbreaking for real key, but definitely uh, a player I'm going to keep my eye on a little bit more. He is the champion of Triple Tree. He qualified uh, for the uh, for World Championships playing that lineup and has completely switched it around again as continuing to bring some more different decks. So he probably had the most exciting game of the tournament so far. Oh, so yeah. very excited to see him back on camera again. Ooh, well, I'm super excited as well. But before we get into the matchup, let's hear what Artify has to say. สวัสดีครับผมอาริซี่ระดับประเทศไทยครับเล่นมาตั้งแต่เบต้าปีที่แล้วครับชอบที่เกมมีภาพโฟอาร์ตนอกเนื้อของขาแต่ไปครับเล่นเกือบทุกวันครับถ้าช่วยแต่ก็ประมาณ 8-10 ชั่วโมงครับเปลี่ยนเต้นครับที่ได้แข่งกับเพื่อนนัดพอบจากทวิตเจ EU ครับอาการ4คิวครับชอบบอร์ด KDA ครับเดเวนไฟออนครับโฟอีนามีครับก็รู้สึกภูมิใจในตัวเองครับ
าดหวังนะเป็นแชมเบอร์ครับ Love hearing what all of these players have to say. I, I mean, Artify bringing Draven Sion really does speak to the strengths that he has as a particular player. Yeah, brings Draven Sion doesn't like Zoe Nami. Thinks he uses the strongest <laughs> region. I'd say he's actually got a pretty good read uh, coming into the tournament. Uh, so curious to see again how the rest of the regions play. But uh, does have a bit of an uphill battle here. So we'll see how he fares up against Real Keys. As Casanova said, both players are looking to pick up that first match win. Yeah, he said EU strongest region, Allen toughest competitor. I mean, you know, NA has been looking a little stronger than EU so far, but we'll have to see. He Alan also uh, mentioned, you know, he's got the he's got the full pro gamer hours. He's playing eight to ten hours a day, <laughs> playing more like a full time job, and he's trying to get that full time money and try and pick up the win here at World. So we'll see uh, if Artify can turn things around because he's still in it. If he just picks up these next couple wins. Well, high stakes match, and we may as well go ahead and get started. So Casanova, when you're ready, take it away. All right, thank you, Necro. But Pastry, oh, we got baby. this match. I'm so excited for this. I, we were talking a lot about Real Key. We were watching the matches behind the scenes. That was the craziest set of the day so far as the first Real Key match. We love watching the TF Swain, and so we're going to get a chance for that as well. But there's also the Plunder List and the FTR, the Brazil Tech in general. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, I'll actually have a look at the players right now and see what decks they brought, because uh, that one is fun. I've been trying to figure it out. I guess it's a cool high-end finish, but we'll look at Artifice decks to keep things yeah, up. As we said, SEA rep, favorite champion Twist of Fate. Man, it's got good taste. That champion's pretty good. Is bringing <laughs> uh, Pink City, I believe, is the name that uh, Panda has crowned it. Uh, GPTF there. Uh, Draven Silent, of course, kind of the flavor of the day. And then Bandawood beat down Lulu and Poppy. Looking to kind of get the... Uh, Demacia rally strategy upgraded with some Bandle City goodness. Yeah, we saw the more aggressive version of the Drea Vincent being piloted by Artify earlier, and uh, he's been really solid on this deck. He actually played really well in his first set. It was just a really close series with What Am I? And uh, I've been pretty impressed with Artify in general uh, across the year and even in the World Championship, even though he did go down in the, the first game. All right, and on the other side, of course, real key. Definitely a bit spicier. I think Artify is bringing... Kind of like the meta we expected, uh, maybe missing Zoe Nami, but does have kind of the new hotness in the TFGP. But real key, again, I said already, the man played Triple Tree, and just look at the decks he has brought. This is uh, this is a wild one here, as far as these three lining up. Artify, representing Brazil, of course, plays in the Americas region, but is, of course, repping uh, BR. And there is Draven Caitlin. Okay, cool. Everyone's on board with that one. Gangplank Sejuani, basically an Allegiance deck. Okay. So a lot of it in Asia in particular in the qualifiers. Seems like a pretty cool deck. And then, of course, TF Swain, because, yeah. I don't know. You have not? to have one, I, I guess, at Worlds. Right? Yeah. We, we, you got you to gotta bring some flavor and spice, right? You got to add it to the, to the, I don't know, ice and traps that you got going on with the rest <laughs> of it. But the Plunder deck in particular, I mean, we've talked. We're, we're definitely going to talk more about TF Swain in general. But the Plunder deck in particular is really interesting because Brazil specifically has a tech card that they love. And we teased it earlier. The, the, the Feel the Rush. They throw this in on the top, and it, it protects the champions from aloof. If you ever actually play it, it's going to win the game. There's very little Ionia, so it's not yep. going to get denied. And it replaces the more commonly seen, like, Three Sisters or Ice Shard tech. And it's specifically been a lot of the Brazilian players that have been really pushing this as the tech card that they love. I also see a lot more Marai Warden out of the Brazil region. They've really enjoyed this deck. This deck originally came out of the brazil region from a player called sudracon back in rising tides playing mono bilge with sejuani the deck has been iterated on over and over and over again and it's back in the meta and brazil once again is kind of the region that loves to continue to push it and continue to play it yeah which is so cool and this is kind of a complicated one just kind of looking at it you're like oh that's a lot of build 40 units and they don't cost very much mana well i guess it's an aggro deck and then you see it's all mana spell you're like oh maybe it's a control deck uh there's definitely like it's pretty low to the ground but you do have some pretty brutal top end set 20 real good gangplank real good as well as kind of a big mid-range unit and uh we've seen it already with dreadway right two copies in this deck for yeah. real key you can go over the top and just end a game in seconds if you've banked up warning shots maybe from your allegiance procs or just having some in hand there's kind of a lot of different modes to this deck and Again, again, kind of like the, the GPTF deck, maybe this is a GP thing now. Kind of, I would say low leading mid-range, but I guess high leading aggro is reasonable as well. <laughs> so the way I've always described it, and it's, I, it's still more like this than anything else for me, is it's a tempo deck at its core. It, it, right. was, it was always a tempo deck when it used to play Misfortune. It used to be called Tempo Sejuani, and it used to play Sejuani Misfortune. Eventually, we've moved over to the Gangplank, but you're still trying to keep up 
a bunch of tempo on board, keep up dealing damage to the face on every single turn to get those level ups. And, and really, it, it still remains at the core a tempo deck, even though, yeah, it's a little bit low leaning aggro, a little bit or, or high leaning aggro and low leaning mid range. It's, it's kind of in the middle, but still sticks with that tempo strategy. I'm sad though, Pastry, because I'm yeah, looking at this too. screen and I'm seeing Twisted Fate Swain as the ban. I'm a little upset about it. That's, uh, that's not what you want to see. Definitely the fans love the TF Swain. Of course, Ryoki, the only representative bringing that one into this, but Draven Sign going to be banned away on the other side. So we'll see GP and Poppy with Bandle City and uh, Demacia, I guess, as their accompanying regions. Kicking things off with uh, Ravenous Flock, because there's lots of those in this tournament. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got a ton of Ravenous Flock in this lineup in general. Uh, and it is going to be on the other side, Ping City, going to be queued up. Going up against Grail Key on the Draven, Caitlyn. Yeah, he actually has six copies of Raven's Flock in his lineup, I think, which is a lot. It's not quite the nine copies of X card that we've seen in the past. Yeah, and, like Bandle Tree one. from Real Key. This time oh, it's yeah. Flock, though, only running six. <laughs> All right, Crack Shot Corsair going to get the party started. Love to see it. Oh, and basically any deck that plays this card, obviously at its best on turn one. Going to go in Crack in for two. Kind of slow on the real key side, but is a tribeam deck, so does have some three drops. Is ready to line him up, but not this turn. Going to have to pass it back. Yeah, real key's early game is very rough, but his three into four is rather strong. He's got the sump dredger on to the lost soul into the twin blade revenant, so it will set up for a pretty solid board after that. But he is taking a good amount of chip just to kick things off, and this deck, of course, famously does not have any way to heal, so taking seven damage by turn three is not exactly where you want to be. Would have loved to see a house spider or something of that nature. And uh, it looks like we're just going to go for the spider for the Rav Flock, maybe to just kick things off. You might even see like Ravenous Flock into a Thermo Beam and just try and really value out these cards. Oh, I actually like that line a lot, but there is the Flock you predicted. I love the open attack as well from Artifact, just trying to crash through for damage, right? You are definitely uh, more the beat down in this kind of matchup and wants to come out strong, especially attacking first and having the Corsair in hand. Oh, not going to commit the beam just yet. Of course, it's Artifice's turn. Going to go ahead and move the deckhand in. That does line up a pretty juicy Twisted Fate next turn, depending on how the turn plays out. But there is the beam. So I really like Real Key. Okay. Committing yeah. his spells, committing his mana, and just saying, get these units off my board. Yeah, he's just playing to try and protect this life total as hard as he can. So utilizing every resource to get rid of these early drops that can provide a lot of damage, uh, prioritizing the target with impact, and then prioritizing the crack drop. Horsehair just trying to stop as much as possible. I love the open attack onto the barrel. It is turn four. There can be TF. There can be, you know, anything else. Try and force Artify to play a spell uh, to start that round, and then you can look for your develop. This is just solid play from Real Key. We're likely to just see a Sump Dredger onto the Lost Soul now and set up to get that Twin Blade Revenant as a threat to continue to remove on your attack token turns. Alright, we'll see how the rest of this turn plays out. A uh, couple full drop choices in hand here for Artify. I'll play the Poison Dart if he plays the Yordle though. And yeah. I don't think Tanner is active, so it may just be Never Twisted Fate here. Yeah, it will be. Draw a card. Ooh, card. Okay. Oh, he just wants the, the proc. Yeah, yep. the, the one damage to the face. Yep. It's GP's That's good. favorite. One to the face. Some treasure in, lost soul out. This is definitely the engine that makes a ton of decks hum. Just about every deck uh, with access to Noxus is doing this in some capacity. Okay, definitely no exception here with Draven pairing with Caitlyn this time around. As second Yordle off the top, gonna get one into play here. Yeah, it's possible that Lost Soul is gonna be one of the most popular cards in the uh, entire tournament. Yep. If we get those stats eventually, it's like because Draven Scion's the most represented deck, which is always running it. And then there's so much Draven Caitlyn and Draven Ezreal that are also all running it. I mean, this, this card is just everywhere, littering the field of play because it's so good. I mean, it's just infinite value and it's infinite value that is impactful pretty immediately because a four mana four three challenger is already pretty good on its own. But the fact that you get to keep recreating it while allowing your discard cards to come out for free is like, I mean, this this card's bonkers. It's crazy. Yeah, it's really good. And like you said, uh, plenty of ways to enable it. I think Poppy in the qualifiers was the champion that appeared the most, but it is very obviously Draven and the different styles of Draven you can build here. 
at least in this pop 16 as we had a lot less uh bandle tree that was basically the change that happened <laughs> everyone got up the tree which disappointed me greatly and uh, i was playing lost soul in every deck yeah. instead for cannon you know america's real key was like a third of them though <laughs> it's like, yeah. it was like a lot of the trees that were being played by having three copies of it or at least he was like a, a high percentage of the trees that qualified for top 16 yeah because he had three copies of tree in his lineup it's funny that he he was the tree player and then didn't play the deck that like in some ways replaced tree in fact he, that's, yeah, he didn't poppy at all he just completely cut it oh so, wow uh, all right team coming in poison dot at the ready but uh not interested in that interested in attacking right now artify doing a lot of map by the looks of things in the camera just counting everything up Ryuki did uh, pop the Pyro Cannon to play an elusive blocker, or maybe an attacker, but I think at 12. And as you mentioned already, cast no way to heal. Definitely yeah. going to try and get uh, some of these small units in the way of the enemy bigger units. Yeah, I expect that this is just going to chump block where the blocks are not favorable. We'll probably see the second Pyro be used as fodder uh, for this Get Excited, unless Ryuki thinks he has time to set up the Lost Soul. I'm just wondering if he wants to play the Get Excited right now. Um just to stop a little bit of damage. You can stop an extra two and that can matter quite a bit. So yeah, we are going to see real key go for that stop. He'll have to find another way to set up the lost soul afterwards, but he does have one revenant already. So he's not hard pressed to make that happen. The Poro on the chump block also sets up the twin blade revenant to remove this lecturing Yordle. So it's overall just a very solid block. You also have the flock, but I think it's more likely we'll see uh, the revenant come down and look for a value trade and then either just block the lecturing yordle or we'll actually see this block come down all right we'll dot to the dome there for artify again knows that only has to do with 20 uh in any by any means necessary so let's put some puff caps in the deck as well deck hand Not the best draw revenant coming down though artify trying to figure out how he wants to navigate here does have the tenor uh pretty good now though with played but that one's a lot better when you get yeah. two units rather oh, than one. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's significantly better when you double the power that it's doing. Well, <laughs> even more than double, actually. Um, some fumes, though, picked up is going to be another enabler for real key. I'm wondering where this beam is at, actually, because I haven't been keeping track. I think it's close to four at this point. Um, it's either three or four. Some fumes will take it to four or five, which is going to be uh, good enough to remove just about anything that hits the board and try and swing the tempo back to real key. He's already taking control of the board, but he is behind in card advantage. And I think that this is a good way to continue a more uh, dominant board position. And if it can remove this lecturing yordle, I think that's the biggest uh, point to pay attention to. For sure. But there is a ton of dots coming in now. Yeah. Uh, got one. Yordle's going to make more next turn. Of course, we expect the three four yordle to be picked off by the Tomb Blade Revenant. Ryuki doesn't have that many different spells he can actually deploy here. Ooh, goes for the flock okay. instead. Yeah, I don't mind the flock. I'm curious how he plans to deal with this other one. Does he want to some fumes plus the Twin Blade Revenant to actually just get rid of it right now? You don't really want to allow them to be attacking. You're already down to 10, and these darts just get worse and worse because they keep adding the shrooms as well. Mm -hmm. You really don't want that concentration. Like, the one damage is bad enough, actually. You really don't even want that. But on top of it, there's a chance that you're going to keep taking even more. And you need time right now for Rilke. He needs to be able to draw cards. Uh, over the next few turns to deal the 20 damage because he's starting to stabilize but he hasn't been able to start turning this around and winning and that's where the mushrooms can really be a nuisance really nice uh note there as well that dot is actually enough to level up gp so Ooh. he's gonna be ready to go scary uh, top decks that, yeah gp always pretty good even better when level but squad's coming in and i think it might be the line you mentioned casanova looks like the sump fumes might be aimed at this Yordle in just a moment. Also, four damage getting in, but that's not really the game Real Key is playing. He's just trying to stabilize here before the rest of the incoming pings kill him. Yeah, I think, you know, the four damage might end up mattering, seeing as how Artify is on so many good outs. Like, the three GPs are just game winning at this point with the level up. There's a Twisted Fate that can start getting you even closer if you want a blue card, because it's all about Gangplank from this point forward for Artify, because it will just essentially end the game unless real key finds some serious answers to that champion all right driver not a bad draw on the other side stone stack is still going to be the first one committed this will be a big attack here for artify you have to think just a matter of exactly what you want to line up here only revenant available 
uh, of this axe, but that's going to take a little while to put together, so we'll see how many units Artify wants to commit before crashing in, because this is definitely kind of a one-way deck. Your units, uh, when you have the attack token, they're going towards the opponent's nexus. They do not do very well <laughs> doing the other thing. Yeah, they are absolutely just running it down uh, <laughs> into the enemy. Theme. There's only mid in Legend of the Rune Terra, so exactly. he's always running down mid. We're running it straight down mid. And, uh, I mean, Real Key is has a good line now with the draven the draven is such a good draw here because you can go draven you can axe the lot soul play the twin blade revenant still have enough for some fumes right and this is going to set up a good way to remove and regain control of the board it buffs up this tri beam again and it's just like can real key hold on to enough hp because these impact units hitting the board are an absolute nightmare right now because they're not only pushing a little bit of damage they're pushing that extra chip and when you're at nine this is getting way too serious i like this tri beam you need to make more board parity as quickly as possible playing both spells is even better you're gonna even it up two to two on the board make it so you have good blocks and then from there you have draven and lost soul the infinite value engine to just try and bring this game home before you take that final like eight or nine damage that's gonna be left yeah i mean again real key is like Playing with danger basically this whole match, right? You're playing from behind left, otherwise that's not a bad hit. No, not terrible. It's it's a good uh, body. 3-4 is just nice in this situation. And uh, Poison Dart at the ready. <laughs> this lecture Yordles have done quite a lot of work. I think he's cast every one that the Yordles mm. has generated. And of course, going to point this one straight at the face as well. I think that's nine mushrooms in the deck. I guess if he's cast uh, all of them, it would be 12. Yeah. It's a lot, whatever it is. There's uh, enough enough to be scary. <laughs> yes, I told, uh, that is a great statement to make. It's enough to be scary. And I, I think that's going to be a big concern for Real Key to try and start racing. He needs to try and deal this 16 as quick as possible. One interesting note about this hit off of the Tri-Beam is because it has Augment, it's actually mm -hmm. going to get attack from these axes being played, which might be relevant if this HP total starts to get really close. Yeah, this game is going to end quickly if Real Key is going to end it, because Artify is running out of steam. Just a TF here, a parlay, not the best top deck here, and does have the deck hand as well to try and power something up. But when your opponent has the attack token, it's going to be real tough to set up a powder keg and a slow spell. Maybe trying to pick off, you know, the, the two health that's left here on the 3-4 that the tri -beam made. Uh, I do love the little augment thing. It's definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> Archivist <cute>. also <laughs> not too bad. But... Artify just thinking like, what do I do? Probably have to cast this TF, but like, what mode do I pick? I, so my opinion is we go blue card and we all in to try and find GP. That's like, it feels like the, the cleanest way to look for a win. The other option I see that feels kind of okay is looking for the um, deck hand into a red card. And then you're looking for a parlay onto Draven and just trying to play to regain the board and slow down real keys offense and make time for the shrooms to actually uh, come into effect, right? So these, those are kind of the two lines that I see that I potentially like, but neither of them I'm in love with. Now that Artify has waited, I almost like a uh, gold card yeah. to just kill one of these. And then when you die to the Twinblade uh, Revenant, it, at least you have Parlay to try and take it off the board or something. Like you can try and slow this down. You'll only take four damage instead of uh, a million, uh, yeah. right? So... I'm not going to do math, but we, math is for blockers. We, you know, we, we learned that one from Trimmer. <laughs> 13 represented right now for real yeah. key. The power of these units, that axe definitely coming in handy. Uh, it's going to be a lot of shrooms. Thank you, Observers, as well. They did highlight it earlier. It's nine puff caps in the deck. Okay. And so a little work to do here. Here comes Twisted Fate. The card is blue. blue. So looking for GP. You still yep. stop stun damage with the block, at the very least. Terror of Terror is a good, that's a good draw. All right, TF not gonna get a not gonna get a choice in the matter. We'll be moved into combat. <laughs> Unfortunately, parlaying this revenant feels pretty bad because your opponent's getting an axe. You don't really want to put lost soul back in their hands. True. Fun note: we now have challenger and quick attack on the five. Oh. <laughs> yep. Nice. On the attack. I forgot it was on attack. Uh, I was thinking it was on play, but it is on the attack. All right, let's see impact damage here. Tri beam. Ooh, another ten. Okay. Oh, hold, hold, hold on a second here. That's uh, that's a lot of damage without okay. having to get through the nexus. There's the tenor going in. Face yeah. of burn's gonna follow it. Shrooms? Shrooms anywhere? Archivist gonna pop here. Not bad choices here. 
And rummage, it rummage. feels like the pick, but the problem with rummage is the shrooms. The shrooms? This Only is so nine. much damage. This is so much damage. Deckhand in as well. It's your turn to attack, so you can play this a lot uh, slower to kind of line up this parlay. I think the 5-2 uh, is about to get it. Also, okay, two but... Nexus damage is like quite a lot. Oh, here's the Tribeam. All right, yeah. you got to get something off the board. Need a block. It made it. room for Tribeam because Station Archivist buffed it up to two. So it can deal oh, with wow. it. it can deal with a base of burden. Okay, right. it gives you another you blocker. Two, two. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it doesn't matter what the stats are. Can it block? Yes. Okay, great. Put it in there. <laughs> All the time though, I think. Take off anything you can. You're just trying to push for damage here. Yeah, it is gonna be the five two. Powder kick's gonna go off. Down to five. Make it two with the impact coming in. I don't think any units are getting through though, so I think it's just gonna be the impact here from these tenors and this base. But some units will trade off here. Your opponent's going to have access to another revenant. You're at seven, though. So if you trade off enough of these units, you're not necessarily going to die from the open attack. Yeah. Okay, there's, but there's value trades on the Draven and the Archivist. But you have to block everything, so you only have Draven and Archivist, but you can win with one axe and the six power of attack. So you can win on uh, open. Okay. Nice note there. And I think that's what... Artifice thinking about. I think that's why he's not all inning because he knows he can die on open if he swings with everything. So we are blo we are blocking deck now. That that's not the twist I expected. All right, there's one in. The three two seems like a pretty good one yeah, to attack with. It trades with everything. Yeah, I think you can go with this one. You put them to four, and then you need to live and hit GP. I mean, it still just comes down to the game plan. Does feel like it. It's like, you know, a lot of. I mean, it's called Pink City for a reason. Right? There's lots of undamaged spells. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you're at five or maybe four after this impact's coming in, not uh, not one. The GP kind of one of the few units that can do a lot of damage. Hidden Pathos also, haven't seen it much today. Are a couple copies in almost all these decks, two seems to be the standard number. That's a way to get more more things to do than one a turn that you're going to draw. Revenant's going to get in the way, though. And uh, we'll be back shortly with the Axe and the Lost Sword coming back to hand. But there's yeah. four. Can rummage this, but I'm curious if Real Key wants to. All right, he's gonna rummage it. All right, no, no mushrooms. mushrooms, no mushrooms. Does this thermo make it open lethal? No more axes, so I'm gonna say no. Passes no. away, no cards to play. Okay, okay. Do you just start with aloof and just because there's been no gangplanks and you just are hoping Ooh. that you stop that? Yeah, yeah, I like this a lot. Just gotta go. Oh, oh, oh my, my goodness! Oh, that that is not good. He's if dead to the red? tenors. They he needs them to get traded off. All right, oh. Drew Blocker as well. The countdown uh, is not gonna matter here. That bomb's not going off in time. Not in this deck. The chemist he blocks. Put it in the board. Shaking his head in the camera. The artify. Knows it's close. If you can get another draw step, at least you get a shot at more troops going off, right? Yeah. But you do have to live this turn. I, I think he's living, though. Looks I'm like looking it. through. I mean, there's just the... There is the thermo. And there is the ability to get a... No, you can't actually get the chomper down. There's no way to get the chomper down. So it's just this thermo. That's the only thing that interacts. It has to go on a tenor. Or else you're yep. dead to the crackback with just the impact. You only need one shroom, though. Impact works on attack, but of course it's Artifice turn to block. The deckhand's the target here from the Thermo, I guess. Okay. You only have two mana left, have to kill something you can actually kill, try and pressure a little bit more. This game's gonna be close, so you have to kill them in two attacks. Is this seven? Is He's got oh, six going math. in, there's three things hitting. Oh, that two is exact. Blocks. It's one over? He made yeah. it, he got there. Nice, the Thermo was enough. Artifice gonna line up every possible block, but it's just oh. not enough. Down to the wire, but real key squeaks it out. The shrooms gave me a heart attack. Yeah, that was he made great. His, I couldn't think anymore. It was like, oh, he's down to two. <laughs> What's happening? He's got to deal with this. But he has the patience, real key, calculating everything out. Sees that he's got the, he's got that thermo. He knows exactly. Okay, I can get six wide. We can go around this. We just have to get that seven damage through. The boom -a boom strong enough with the three power. Real key grabs game one, and he just has plunder remaining to go up against these two board centric lists this is what plunder thrives in with the Sichuani. if it can make it through the game long enough to get that level up i think real key's got to be happy with his odds going into this uh second game yeah definitely can snag one of the next two but artify gonna have to recompose himself 
Shaking his head a little. Again, you said GP would have been a great draw at any time. I mentioned when it leveled up about 17 turns yep. <laughs> uh, before that. But unfortunately, never came off the top of the deck. So that's it. They're going to reload back in. It is just Plunder, as you mentioned, for real key. And still two to go here. And it uh, looks like we're going to run it back with Pink City here. Oh, Gangplank's gone. I saw one in hand briefly. It's the first time I've seen <laughs> found him. found it. Yeah. <laughs> Not good on found him, one, though. Found his boat on out. the other side. <laughs> Alright. Ooh. That's a that's a nice start for Ruki. We got the warning shot into Butcher, turn one. You'll love to see it. Although Artifact probably doesn't like to see it. <laughs> probably very unhappy to be seeing it actually. <laughs> Gamus. Getting in the way? Probably not. It's definitely an interesting one. We saw real Artifact is like trying to, you know, go a little wide, get the impact going, ping away, peck away at the opponent. There is once again no healing here for real key, but this 3-3 three, three is very big on turn one. Yeah. They're just going to have to say, take it. Like, if you block it, is your turn two just parlay? <laughs> like, is yeah, that your whole turn two? pretty bad. That does not feel good at all. Because, like, if you play units, it's just going to trade again into Butcher. So the parlay is... feels like the best thing. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh that was okay. a hit and a half. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, oh, everyone's in? All right. <laughs> Warden hits Corsair. Corsair's going to get blocked, but this is just five already. Yeah. Artifact's got to be pretty happy with that turn two attack. That's that's pretty solid. The Corsair is a, a really nice touch. And nothing left here for Ryuki. He just has to pass it back. Artifact no mana. Passes it straight back, of course. Warning shot once again off the top. And Monkey Idol yeah. in the house for the first time this match. Yeah, the, the engine online early. The board's not too terrifying yet for Ryuki, so you feel pretty good about playing that on your attack token. You can just use the warning shot to get the trigger for your Sejuani's and two Sejuani's in hand. This card, I mean, once she's leveled, is just game winning against this deck a lot of the time. But even before leveling her up, she's going to impact the board super heavily. Real Key's got to feel nice having that for turn six. Unfortunately, not having the attack token on turn six for that, so it won't line up perfectly. But overall, uh, feels pretty nice to just have that champion ready to go as soon as you're able to play her. My friend Here, Fred Cup. Ooh, Polly is not a bad okay. grab. Yeah, that's not a bad hit. That's yeah, playable. Off. <laughs> it is playable. <laughs> Three one's gonna eat it here. Shot down. Hit. But returned in kind. Yeah, it's also gonna give the uh, the tick of damage this turn. You can hold on to the warning shot. I got it. Yeah, got it from the monkey as well. Oh, got it from the monkey. Record. That's right. And uh, stack it. They get blocked up by the 3-3. Three, three. This is 4. Monkey Idol, of course, cannot block or attack. Just makes monkeys. Fifth damage from the uh, impact as well on those stackers. Double up also a brutal spell. It does yeah. so much damage. That's a rough one for sure for real key. And this deck does not answer double up. Like a lot of other decks have ways mm -hmm. to either buff their unit out of range or kill their own unit or, or just try and stop it, right? But this deck cannot answer it, so Real Key's about to take a decimate to the dome and lose his unit for it. You don't want to commit Monster Harpoon? <laughs> no? Yo, you might. You actually... I mean, wait, is it enemies uh, only? I always forget with this one. Monster uh, Harpoon. I feel like it should be. Because you're, you, you, you're hunting monsters with your Harpoon. Why would you... Or do you shoot your own monsters? That doesn't seem right. Flavorfully, that <laughs> seems off. But uh, mechanics-wise, it might actually come in handy. <laughs> we'll see. Five mana for Artifice. Oh, just any unit. Oh, yeah. all right. Any easy peasy. Yeah. You know, just commit your warning shot and your <laughs> your removal spell. Yeah. And I uh, try not to take four. <laughs> I haven't really seen people use monster harpoons on their own units. Uh, it's just that been makes an interaction. Sense. I have not, have not <laughs> seen much. Uh, so... That, that is a, a potential play for real key. I mean, it, Heck, it's <laughs> it's pay a lot, but you got to stop that four damage from going through. We'll see. I'm actually curious what Artify wants to do here. Tana feels pretty good. Yoda feels nice too. Saw how much work the poison darts did last game. Almost got Artify over the line. Also has a huge amount of toughness, so he's going to be the play here. Really good blocker in spots like this. Yeah, that's super nice, and real key is already very low, so getting a couple mushrooms and just that extra guaranteed damage to the face is, is really nice. You, you can hold on to this uh, double up as just the finisher as well. It doesn't need to come down at any point. You're winning on board. You can use that once uh, once things get a little bit more difficult for you. 
also interesting to kind of see how Artifice next turn comes around because he is the even attacking player as you mentioned so he's going to have access to six which is enough to play both these impact units so that of yeah. course means real key can play set 20 and impact units do have to strike in order to get their impact and hit the nexus an extra time that's so true Cook, Cook, Cook one out we'll see what happens Ooh, hidden pathways finally appear i think that's more of a finisher <laughs> uh, if i can hold on to that one turn sack is in play though Okay, we'll see. There's, the first one's frozen, but now get you get out. to go tenor. Yeah, might have wanted to wait, but I guess it's one unit regardless, so it doesn't really matter. And you mentioned the Sedge level up uh, matters a lot against these impact units, but she's not there yet. She can get there, but she can't level and proc her ability, so right. this damage is coming through, and real key is going to be low enough to die to double up uh, with a one drop on board. However, now real key has a way to answer it, with this Fury of the North in hand. Oh yeah, the uh, Sedvani has transformed into a spell that's not listed in his deck. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Seen a lot of that today. Champion spells, at least in my games, have been pretty impactful. <laughs> uh, Fury of the North is going to look pretty good, but next is down to four. That did happen, so there's a couple shrooms floating around. Uh, a trifecta, if you will. So again, Artify, once again, he is close. But Ryoki is going to take over this game if you can't finish off this one. And there's Zap. Yeah, these make it rains are huge too for trying to proc the Sichuani on off turns. Oh no, Artify, this pass, is, this is getting bad. further away from him than I think he wants. And uh, as long as Real Key doesn't tap out from this Fury, he can stop the double up, and that four damage is going to be hard to find. Yeah, keeping this warning shot for the, the burst speed freeze. Is going to be absolutely brutal against his impact units. The stone stack is going to get in the way of Sedge. Everyone's just blocking the NCF, at least can trade off one, but Zap's getting in, a couple Sedge damage is getting in. That should be enough to flip Sedge over. Oh, committing a spell now. Oh, double is fast. Forgot about that part. He's I mean, going to commit onto up. the Zap, but here's the Fury you mentioned. That's really brutal. Yeah, I mean, that. that is close oh. to sealing this game up. That might be able to just do it. I mean, there's still outs because this is just four health, right? If we hit another double up, it's it, it's it's possible once again. Yep. So the five elusive damage in, so 20 flips. That's going to be an extra overwhelm damage. Artifice got one turn, and it's going to be extremely difficult to get through this leveled up set 20 with the warning shot still in hand that Artifice knows about. So the tenor is not going to do please. it. No, yeah, impact units are, you know... Ooh, impact? hello! Is he leveled? I don't That's think like two so. damage. Ooh, all right, hidden pathways instead. What do we got? Twist of fate. Gangplank again. Not, not the best because it gives you parlay, but it's not the best. It's, it's better than a lot of other things that would just yes. be units <laughs> that get frozen, but you wanted the double up. Yeah, GP not leveled. Close, but okay. not close enough. You can parlay first and level him. Parley face for two, and then attack in and deal one more, but you're one off, and you would need to top deck that last point of damage. Pokey stick, something. Yeah, you're also getting, uh... Yeah, your units don't have attack. It might look like they have power right now. They don't. It's all getting shut off by this one shot. Zap trying to make it rain. Triple make it rain, actually. Could see some hilarious lethal. Yeah, uh, real key has lethal. Oh, to the face. Make it rain. Make it rain. Make it rain. Warning shot. <laughs> that is lethal. You're not wrong. It's just a matter of what you what units yep. you end up hitting. Wait, shouldn't you let the poly resolve first? If, if he waits until the pegs resolves, he has guaranteed lethal, but I'm wondering, can he lose to one mana if he does that? Another poly? No, that doesn't do it. <gasps> I I can't. Can you tell All what's right. happening here? Okay, a keg died, so <laughs> I'll find one. I'm pretty yeah. confident. Oh, two. And then the warning shot could put him to one. Artify his face. <laughs> I don't know if he knows what's going on or not. But all right, make it rain's happening. Real key. Okay, one miss. For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely could tell one miss. I bet him out. No, I'm still there. Oh, all right. Great. You're so on Jeep, it. So GP's going to make a keg at the round start. And we just need to rip the, the old pokey stick. I haven't seen it much all day. 
Is that it? Make it rain, maybe? With some insane RNG, you could get it done? Ollie's um, not going to do it. That's a slow spell. Double up to fast spell. That could be a meme. Yeah, because the keg died, though... Break their legs. You get another one, though, right? That's true. So the Wait, attack what? in... GP, get GP out of there! Die. Get out! So, so here's the problem. Because there. there's not enough damage now. If he waits, Pokestick's not enough. It's only two damage. Oh, of course. The so keg he needs... Ah. Because the keg died. So he ah. needs to attack with GP, but he needs GP to live, so he can't attack with GP. Well, he's attacked with GP. So, the, uh, the conundrum... It's just double up. Oh, boy. <laughs> is, just this really, up. is this really what we've gotten yeah. to? It's just double up. I'm, All right. I'm pretty sure. Two copies left. One more pathways to try for the redraw. But I think you're right, Casanova. I think it is just the double up. GP going to deal one, but one's not enough. No more kegs. GP's gonna get blocked. Double up or bust. You cannot do two damage with anything other than kegs, which you cannot have. And double up, which you now must draw. Is it gonna What's be the rip? Yes? Which it doesn't matter. What's this? That's not double up. It's Corsair. Real key gonna take the two zero. Pink City cannot get it done. And Artify O two. Real key gonna pick up his first win in the group. Holding my breath on that one. It could have been hidden pathways too. Could have been yeah, that. Yeah, for the redraw. The up, right? there's, there's a couple things that he could have found there, but. Three outs. Oh, Real key finds it. Very, very intense game number two, but he does pick up that 2 0. Gets that first win for Brazil, and SEA still winless right now in the World Championship. Oh, that was such a hard loss for Artify for sure. But real key taking the win. That does put him at 1-1 and still in contention for one of those top two spots. I, I mean, that was just uh, that second 2-0 of the day. That's pretty exciting to see pastry time. Yeah, so much fun here. I think like games again are a lot closer than the skull and indicates. And it is interesting to see a deck that kind of came up between the qualifier and the world championship starting that was pretty pretty hot on a lot of people's lists obviously quite a few players brought it so they were very comfortable with that kind of strategy but it has not seemed to have enough reach uh, either with the draws or within this field mm -hmm. to maybe get it done like artify was extremely close in all of those games but when you're playing a deck that kind of just does one damage over and over again close is absolutely not close enough yeah this yeah, is I'm... um oh sorry Nick. this is oh, one no. of the ahead, this yes. is one of the times that we've seen yet again we've seen a champion spell that is not main deck come yep. out and provide a blow up. This is not the first time we've had it on the broadcast today. We had a whirling death earlier provide the same uh, level of pain to somebody. And it's just, it's important to note for these players, like sometimes you do have to pay attention to those champion spells, even if they're not in the main deck, because they can make all the difference. Ooh, so much patience executed by both players in order to navigate this incredibly tough matchup. But let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. Now that we have seven matches concluded, Group A starting to get a little bit of a feel for what things are kind of happening there. What do you think, Pastry Time? This Group A is looking real fun right now. What am I obviously feeling real good at 2 and 0? But both Logitech and Real Key are players that uh, very easily were favorites to maybe make it out of this group. Artify, unfortunately, not having the strongest showing so far. Uh, but the fact that, you know, it's EU and Brazil, I guess, or Americas, we'll say, uh, in this case, fighting it out for the, the other slot out of that group is super exciting. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, the way the groups work, only two of these players can qualify. And the, the race with those two one on one players that's EU's going to make it out is going to be really fun. Yeah, I mean, Cass, we also still have to kind of figure out what's happening in Group B, right? That's going to be our um, next stop. Um, but I think these matches have been incredible to watch so far. All of these players absolutely giving it their all. And this is the top 16 in the entire world going head to head for that champion title. Pastry Time, thank you so much for casting these last two matches. We're going to have to say goodbye to you for now, but we will see you a little bit later. Casanova, 